Welcome everybody to our webinar today at SI, talking about the complexity principles for organizations. Uh, you will have seen that we have proudly published uh, a new paper out of the organizations app. You, you can see it here in, in our Myra board and we're welcoming you to this session. The purpose of the session is to introduce these principles yes. and explain how they are making sense for organizations, for the management of them and the development of organizations. We will also inspire a conversation later on in how we can apply these principles to go learn from them, ideate with them, to make them applicable in, in our workplaces, preferably. And that's independent uh, from wherever we work. If we work in a, in a public job, in an NGO, in a business organization, it doesn't matter. That's all organizations. We are all fine with that. The practicalities of our session today, it's going to be one and a half hours. And right after this introduction, we will present you the, the paper with the principles. We'll ask you to make a, a little warm up for us to get going. And then we're going to all spread out in breakout rooms to go into more detailed sessions around our preferred principles, discuss that, and then feedback on that in the, in the broader group again in the last 15 minutes, and then listen to a little close out as we usually do to see what are the next steps. How did you like it? And what's what's happening in the broader community? Let me introduce you to the facilitators of this session. What we all have in common is we are all part of the organizations team. And the first person that you can see on the Myra board, that is Andrea. Andrea, please wave. Andrea Soldano from Buenos Aires. She's also the, the head of the Buenos Aires Hub. In Hello, Argentina. everybody. And she, she runs her own company and she loves everything around Agile for organizations. Uh, also with us is Sanjana, Sanjana Pai. She's in the States. She works in the strategy section of uh, a big consulting company. And then we have uh, support from Anya, from Anya Löw from SI, who is also with us in the organizations team to make us work on these principles. And uh, my name is Bernd, I'm a business coach, happy to be here and happy to finish up the intro and pass it over to Sanjana. Great, thanks for kicking us off, Bernd. So let's move over to this section of the board. Um, we've pulled a few pages from the principles paper to provide a refresher on the content the full paper can be accessed um, in this resource section above, but for now, let's go through a quick overview of, the, of this. So first thing, what are principles and why do we need them? Principles act as foundational concepts uh, to guide decisions and are able to be applied in different contexts. Organizations are complex environments, but traditional and dominant approaches to them tend to treat them as simple or complicated structures, meaning that they overlook the interdependent and dynamic quality of them and expect the same set processes to create the same results over time. So these complexity principles aim to be more reflective of the nature of organizations so we can develop shifts for them to, to thrive in our complex reality. Here are some examples of complex challenges organizations might face. So fostering and enabling collective intelligence towards optimal strategic decisions, achieving alignment within a diverse and multicultural or global organization, keeping up with and properly integrating technology developments for digital transformation, maintaining agility, purpose, and relevance in large enterprises, creating the right context for employees to maximize their potential, developing awareness of impacts and positive stakeholder relationships. So with that, we see the characteristics of complex of complex systems like organizations um, are that they are open, meaning that they lack decisive boundaries and mix with other aspects of the environment. They're emergent, so unprescribed patterns come out from combinations of smaller interactions. They're networked. 
heavily influenced by their connective tissue and quality of relationships and dynamic. So they're constantly changing, adapting, and transforming. So based on those characteristics, these are principles organizations could adopt to heighten how they function. So the first one we have here is holistic. Uh, so that's understanding how the broader context uh, affects the organization and vice versa and developing multidimensional strategies that work towards alignment. Facilitation, which is realizing and enabling the potential of people to generate new patterns of possibility. Relational, so recognizing interdependence and strengthening the web of connections with intention. And finally, we have responsive, which is timely adoption to changes and evolving through continuous learning. All right, so now let's transition to the warm up. If we could all move to this area of the board, here we can just grab a sticky um, and add your role, industry, and organization size. And then what we want to do is move it on this continuum based on how aligned you think your organization is with these complexity principles that we just went over here. So give you a few minutes to go through and get started on that. And then after this, uh, we'll be going into breakout rooms for a deeper dive and discussion into complexity principles. And we'll use this warm up activity to help introduce yourselves to other people in your group. I'm just looking at what we have now. It looks like we have quite a bit of a range from larger organizations to ones that are on the smaller side, but so far they all seem to be <laughs> more on the uh, the bottom half of, of the scale so far in terms of alignment with complexity principles. Okay, perfect. If you're still uh, writing down your responses, you'll have some time to complete it as we shift to breakout rooms because um, we'll use your content here to help introduce yourselves to others. Quite few, so it will be easy to, to discuss and to chat about everything here. Well, the idea is this in the board, if you go to room one, we have there the steps we, we will be following. Uh, we will dedicate five minutes to, to introduce ourselves. And then we will read the principles and vote with the idea to choose Two, just two principles where we will be discussing and focus on. So later we will take our main ideas to the big room and discuss with every people. If that well, the, there will be better metrics to capture programmatic gaps. That, that's that's me. Okay, interesting. Is how how do you think these metrics are related to holistic? Uh, well, I think they only capture um, part of how we, we operate in terms of uh, the enterprises that we encourage students to support. So I feel like if we're, you know, coming at it from a more holistic approach, um, you know, we, we would revise the the indicators we're using and, and trying to look at um, where there are opportunities to to improve the, the services we offer and and. and how we measure the impact of of um, the enterprises. Okay, good. We have the break silos also. Okay. Yes, I, I, I wrote that uh, that one. I think the idea is that uh, either in the, within an, an organization or even like uh, an organization with its environment, um, people have a tendency to to work like in for their department or for their um their services their line of service that they're in charge of and 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 not make enough links uh, and linkages with the uh, other um, other teams and other organization uh, which is detrimental to the the, the main purpose uh, they're trying to achieve uh, many times yeah this is related to see the whole context and when they're working in silos, they, they just view just a, a, a fraction of the of everything. In the, they cannot see the whole organization 
or the main goals the organization has. So it's, it's very important to like to begin to break these silos, but uh, like having something that we can go and come and go from one place to another to see everything. Yeah, yeah oh. and, and I was just reflecting because um, the way it's described there, um, it feels like a conventional uh, strategic uh, planning is similar to that. But then I think people have a tendency once the, the, the strategic plan is done to focus on it and then to uh, like uh, or God, forget the, the yes, rest. Yes, yeah, exactly. So they, they open to the environment during the, the, the planning phase. And then once it's a, it's a settled, OK, that's where our targets, that's our, our goal and objectives for, for the year. Then they focus uh, only on executing instead of keeping uh monitoring the environment and, and what other people are doing yeah perfect okay well anya do, do you want to add something uh yeah maybe i um stepping back um of so um the organizations i worked with they're all around service and then understanding the service in a holistic way can create also better uh possibilities or also possibilities to adapt to different environments if the service is really put forth as the purpose of the existence of that organization so by understanding uh, an organization's service um, in a holistic way one could also avoid the inbox thinking um, and also create better strategies to actually providing that service and not really thinking in one's again silos but really yeah you, you could definitely have more space to um, think about better strategies to providing services and feedback loops possibly yeah okay thank you okay this uh, holistic approach also gives as a vision that is not only my my view my work my company but also outside my company which uh, other entities we are we are working with my customers my um, providers the the city and everything this holistic is like seeing the whole okay we will go to the next question that is what challenges are preventing your organization from implementing this principle? Well, they say here, I think Philips put small size and or budget make it harder to have a specialist staff. Okay. Access to information. The ego is involved. <laughs> yeah. It's also related to breaking the silos. It's, it's difficult to break silos when, when we have the ego there. Ooh. Okay, any other ideas you want to share about this question? I think people tend to get into a routine mm -hmm. and that is a personal barrier to yeah, stepping yeah. back and um, yeah, saying not my problem. It requires a lot of energy to think holistically. So yeah, routine is a bit of a barrier. Yeah, and not also uh, it's difficult, but sometimes people is afraid to go out from the processes or from what is already doing every day from this routine so it's not so easy because it's a, a big change a different mindset we, we we need to have well a bit uh on the same way then uh routine uh it, it requires more time to uh to monitor uh the environment you, you need also uh uh some form of um uh legitimacy or or mm. like um if you want to to integrate uh other services or uh, other teams into uh what what you're doing to to 
know better. Sometimes the structures are not there to have uh, an adequate uh, coordination. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe it's just like not what's expected from you. So uh, you will just like uh, follow a bit like you said, the, the processes, the, the current processes. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Well, we our last question is what are opportunity spaces you see to incorporate and grow this principle in your organization? Is there any space? Are there any opportunities for incorporating this holistic principle? So, so what we are doing now is having a representative for each room that will share the main ideas that you discuss in the rooms. And we will put also that ideas in the in this work so we can have everything together here. Ah, I see room two already put their ideas here very quickly. So we begin with room one. If uh, Anya, do you want to be the representative and share the ideas or? I don't see, ah, Philip yeah, is here also. Yep, so um, I can just start um, to summarize as much as I can and then um, let me know if I've missed out anything. Uh, but what we chose as a first principle was holism. And um, we noted that uh, holism helps um, in terms of uh, breaking silos and um, understanding maybe the service in a holistic way can help us create better strategies um, and um, help us take a step back um, from what is actually being done and asking ourselves the question, does this really is this really aligned with our service and our purpose? Um, and um, we looked at the barriers of that, um, how, uh, the barriers around integrating um, holism more into our processes and awareness. And um, one of them was uh, that the ego is sometimes involved or routine is involved or routine is kind of sometimes a barrier to uh, taking holistic approaches um sometimes access to information um and also um small budget size a uh, small sized budget makes it harder to have a specialist a specialized staff um so that was one and um possibly also um thinking about ROI in kind of the old, older ways um is also maybe a barrier to actually um um, yeah, stepping back, creative new ways of uh, doing things that is maybe more uh, necessary and aligned to the service um, and possibly a way to get out of these siloed ways of thinking or uh, into processes that might be misleading is uh, addressing new ways of to see uh, invest return of investment. So thinking about and talking about more of the long prof uh, long term um, profits rather than the short-term profits, um, creating a culture for development uh, through training, learning, uh, speakers, or sharing more of these um, success stories um, in implementing holism. That might also be a, an opportunity. Um, and um, let me know if I've missed anything out from my group. Um, okay. Okay. And um, the second one was uh, facilitation as a principle. And um, we um, looked at um, how, yeah, facilitation could help create uh, more of a self agency reward system. So by doing more um, through allowing spaces uh, for people to actually be active and be heard and listened, um, that might create this uh, self-agency reward system and uh, it would also distribute uh, responsibility and authority 
um, which would allow more um, innovation or creative uh, processes to occur. And um, basically coming from the more you contribute to something, the more you get back. Uh, so facilitation could allow that and um, allow more experimentation. And then we looked at the barriers. What are the barriers that um, take us away from facilitating, from, from having a space um, to allow things to happen? It is uh, maybe a barrier is lack of trust um, or imposed performance goals, um, culture of control and over specialization and no right to fail. And those expectations that are set could be a barrier to actually um, allow um, things to, to emerge organically um, and also uh, um, be a barrier for creative processes. Um, and then what are the opportunities possibly um, to create that safe space, a psychological safe space as a facilitator to distribute this facilitation roles to anyone who is um, in that position and also to allow that um, um, space to share projects with other organizations, the MVVP approach, um, and also uh, encourage people to uh, work with others in the right way um, encouraging um, authenticity and honesty um, as a culture and then possibly creating uh, structures around that to create that safe space. Let me know if I've missed out anything. Okay, Philip, if you want to add something or if something someone has a question for, for this group. No? Okay, so we go to room two with the representatives that want to share with us the main ideas. It has to be me, so. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, actually, we also have a colleague, but, uh, you know, he's a doctor. He's part of the British NHS. He, He's working in a hospital, and uh, he could he he contributed quite uh, with uh, value. He had a valued contribution, but he he couldn't stay. Um, anyway, we uh, we started with the holistic approach, and uh, actually. Uh, starting where uh, everything comes from uh, and human centered uh, this is okay this is related to the to the hospitals uh, actually uh, it it should be it it should start with the the with the human centric because everything starts with the human needs or uh, human desires um, and focusing on the on the humans uh, it, it's a it's a starting uh, it's a starting point um, okay so um, um I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, there Maybe are some, uh, someone can, can help yeah. you with the I'm sorry. With ideas. Someone else can help you with ideas. Uh, well, it could be Sanjana, but uh, yeah. let, let me try to to continue then. Okay. Um, we we found that uh, short term uh, vision and sh focusing on short term uh, has a let's say uh, it's an impediment to to do a long term transformation. Uh, also, numbers 
the people focusing on numbers, especially decision decision makers in in big companies, look on on numbers, and uh, numbers are easy to to deal with. But at the end of the day, there are uh, people affected in 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 this uh, in this respect and uh, um, i think that there is a gap in uh, in the mindset of the decision makers and uh, and the people that, that are in the execution area that uh, if the people are affected there is a disengagement between uh, the top management and the rest of the people. And then uh, uh, there is, uh, this is a big, uh, this is a big challenge, uh, disengagement. Uh, so this, uh, because of disengagement, uh, organization for the organization is difficult to, I mean, there is no trust in the in the people in the top management, and even if they try to to implement good principles, there is a, a problem with uh, with with these actions to be to be done. Uh, and uh, actually, at the end of the day. Uh, we think that uh, making uh, employees feeling good and uh, uh, then making the customers feel good and the rest of the stakeholders feel good, then everybody become uh, could become more engaged and uh, uh, collaborative and promote and become promoters uh, for the for their organization. We also found that the companies run by the founders uh, can instill the, the, this change and uh, the the power of change, and they they come with with good energy to 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 make the change and transformation. Uh, we had, uh, for example, we have uh, the example of uh, Apple when Steve Jobs. Uh, came back in 1997 and he could uh, give the rebirth of uh, of apple at that time uh, but we also found that uh, microsoft uh, had the opportunity to change and transform with the with the, with his uh, last uh, ceo the current ceo who took the company in a when it was in a bad position from a founder and now microsoft is is quite expanding and growing um, <laughs> on okay then we we move to facilitation uh, we we think that uh, uh, companies that uh, facilitate uh, its people to express themselves and to to discover themselves the enabling them to to collaborate and to to contribute and uh, also facilitate uh, uh, people to be self-directed uh, uh, the companies will will become more collaborative more open more engaged uh, so that uh, they can uh, uh, grow and uh, and develop uh, in a in a better way. Um, so, what challenges are preventing uh, the organization? Uh, actually, I I believe that. Uh, uh, that there are specific mindsets of of decision makers uh, that can uh, that can prevent uh, this uh, implementation of this principle, especially as Anya mentioned before, it ego of people. It could be a good. Uh, uh, a strong uh, impediment 
or uh, the resistance to change or fear to change uh, or fear to actually to enable to delegate or to enable people to to have their voice and to 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 express themselves um, so um, uh, speaking of opportunities that uh, actually it's selecting uh, I, I i think it's it's the culture of of the of the company the principles of the companies uh, the the culture the mindsets the attitudes uh, are are those that uh, that they can enable people to to collaborate and to 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 do this facilitation uh, it's a specific I think it's a specific behavior of the people to to facilitate others to engage and collaborate and uh, and be self-directed. Um, and so it's culture. It's the way you the company select their people based on on their mindsets, their personalities. Uh, their attitudes and behaviors, values, their values exactly, uh, purposes actually, because uh, at the end of the day, facilitation is a tool to reach a tool. Let's say it's not quite a mm -hmm. tool, but uh, it's a way. It's a way to. Uh, gather the contribution of your people towards to reach your common purpose. Yeah, to help and others or to, 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 to help you? <laughs> help others, exactly. Enabling others to uh, to be part of your team because it's, it's a question of uh, of empowering. Empowering. others empowering yeah. empowering okay. your team empowering you, others you know we are running out of time and we have another and, and i jumped to, into to... the part into this relational with these things thank you no it's okay First it's okay it's very nice distributed yeah it's very interesting and we all want well, to continue talking about that but we have another group that has to, to share their ideas group three if you want can you please uh, go to our room three slide, and we can use we can use that, just the the principle of holism. Just zoom zoom exactly. Thank you. Then we got we got Tamina there, but we will help you. Great. Thank you. So we had some really good discussions uh, in our room, and my colleagues came from many different backgrounds. Um, a different uh, complex organizations. And uh, one of the things before we get into some of the things we talked about was that there's so much commonality. It doesn't matter whether you're coming from healthcare or uh, financial services, big banks or pharmaceuticals or telecom. There's so many commonalities there, which kind of uh, stood out to me. So I wanted to share with the group. Uh, I'll try and do justice to the rich conversation we had. And my colleagues, please feel free to jump in uh, and add anything I might have missed. Um, so we talked about a lot of things in terms of the organization. And we focused on the principle of uh, holistic and how it's important to look at the organization as a whole um, beyond just the, uh, the individual units. And there were a lot of very good points that were raised. Uh, I'll bring up, I'll uh, bring some uh, some of the ones that stand out uh, forward. Uh, one of the things we talked about was that there are a lot of commonalities in large organizations because there are lots of people and there's lots of systems, a lot of processes and culture, et cetera, that's already there, uh, which creates a level of complexity uh, that is fairly unique to big organizations. Uh, and ecosystems. Um, we talked about a lot of the 
challenges which are um, optimizing locally and not necessarily op optimizing for the entire organization, uh, which is a challenge that is very hard to deal with uh, because everyone looks at their own siloed world and what and tries to maximize for their objectives. But it's really important to have a shared goal for the entire organization. Uh, Easier said than done. Um, and one of the things, a very important point that we talked about was defining what does good look like as an organization, uh, as a whole, and how do we measure it? And it's definitely not simple, not easy. Uh, we talked about a lot of instances where it can actually not work to the advantage if you're looking at things that uh, are not contributing to making progress. Uh, so it's really important to really think about what does good look like uh, in, the, in the big picture. Uh, the other thing we talked about was uh, continuous learning and feedback, because anytime there is some there is complexity, uh, you know that the answers are not easy. They're not simple. Uh, so the only way we can get to those answers is to work together, and it's through continuous learning and feedback mechanisms. So we're always adjusting. Um, in in the world I come from, which is like the agile methodology, switching from you know these long multi-year projects to having a more agile approach to development of systems to make sure we're in touch with where we're going and are we going in the right direction. Uh, a lot of my colleagues raise that point regarding continuous learning and feedback and having those mechanisms, um, uh, which is really important. Um, what else? Uh, we did talk about culture and preparing uh, the ground for change is important. Uh, it's not something that happens by itself. It needs to be created over time, working holistically, working together with shared objectives. Uh, so that is very important because if you don't prepare the ground, uh, the ground rejects the idea. So it's really important that we really uh, think about how this will be used, how will this affect the stakeholders uh, and what this could look like and try and do it in an inclusive fashion, uh, taking many different um, inputs um, and uh, including uh, different perspectives. Um, I'll reach out to my colleagues. Have I missed anything? Because I'm sure I'm missing a lot of really good points. Uh, we had some really insightful conversations. So Bernard, if there's anything that you'd like to add uh, or anyone else. Great summary. Okay. So Up, no, sorry. Termina did well, thank you. Ob obviously we still have to answer the question, how do we put that together into concrete implementations? Uh, but I think that that culture and the big picture and the purpose, the ground, uh, that that needs to be an aligned work that the organization must undertake. And that's how they grow together. So we, we haven't found the concrete measures for that, but that is the way to go. Thank you. I think we have to start with why. Yeah. <laughs> with a purpose. So, um, okay. Yes, and uh, why everybody uh, from the purpose and then why everybody should be engaged in this adventure because it, we propose an adventure and uh, what kind of experiences shall we have in this adventure? Uh, how shall we feel in this adventure? Yeah. Um, and why we might feel bad or not so good in some times and why we will feel good at the end of the day. Uh, we see the Everest, we want to be there, We it, it's going to be painful, but if we want to go there and everybody should be aligned to to go there, then we will scratch our knees and stuff like this, but at the end of the day, we'll be there. And uh, who wants to who wants to join? 
Yes. But this this should be clear. Yeah. Uh, and uh, everybody should believe in this at the end of the day, and feel good to do it every yeah. day. I I will bring yeah. this. Uh, uh, just to close this event because we are unfortunately over time and thanks everyone for staying for so long and uh, sorry if we went over time but um, here uh, this mirror board is accessible to everyone um, so you can definitely go back to your notes revisit them and reflect on them um, and uh, also here you have the links on the last section on where to find us and uh, if you're new to the SI platform, then um, yes, you can also join just as a member in the organization's hub. So you can join us by just clicking here and also um, follow us on uh, LinkedIn. And um, what we're doing next is we're just we're looking at uh, toolkits um, and hopefully we can create something valuable to share with you as well. And we'll have some learning journey discussions with John Mortimer, who you possibly know as well, who's part of the team. Um, and do yeah, reach out to us if you have any um, other interest in getting involved. Um, and um, definitely hope that this was a, a very valuable session and that you learned a lot and made connections and got some interesting insights to integrate into your organizations or your next steps. And um, here is also a space to give us feedback, which is all, always very appreciated um, since we talk about feedback. We definitely want to craft the workshops um, better and make them more valuable for everyone. Um, so definitely, uh, yeah, we would appreciate that as well. And thanks everyone for joining.